What's going on, chess lover? This is uh, Maurice Bishop, and today I'm going to show y'all Unleash the Dragon. Unleash the Dragon. <laughs> That's like a Street Fighter thing. Are you all get like Ryan, you okay? Yeah, yeah. Man, y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, y'all, I'm going to show you uh, how the Black Lion does, you know, uh, with Black. Uh, it, it gets uh, very tactical, but I want to show y'all some stuff that um, White can do to the Black Lion as well. So without further ado, let's actually get started. All right, y'all. So uh, my opponent plays e4. I play d6. Y'all already know how I do. Um, d4, knight b to d7, knight c3, e5, g3, c6, knight g to e2, queen c7, bishop g2, h6. Uh, he castles kingside, knight g f6, and bishop b3. All right, y'all. So after bishop e7 and he goes h3, uh, this is the rule of thumb. If he goes h3, you want to go g5, which is what I did. I go g5. Uh, queen d2 is played, and I play... You know what? I, I'm going to let y'all think of this. What What is a move that black can do in his position? You know? you know. And like I said, y'all see the black line a lot, whatever. Y'all see what I do. What move will y'all do in his position? All right? Just really think about it. All right, yeah, I know a lot of y'all probably saying uh, knight f8, which is not a bad move at all. It's actually still a good move. Um, you know, a lot of y'all probably is saying uh, knight f8, but I would recommend actually. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm over here. Uh, my wife got her hair done. That don't look good. Very good. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, uh, the best move, actually, y'all, would be actually a5. Um, the reason why I say a5 because it's going to stop um, white from doing any type of queen side attacks on a uh, on the queen side. Um, so like if he wanted to go b4, he wouldn't be able to do it because his a a pawn is on. Um, this a5 pawn is actually going to uh, take away the b4 square. So, which is why a5 is what I recommend. Um, he goes a3, and I go rook g8. You know, getting the rook on that g file and everything. Um, after rook g8, he goes rook a d1, uh, knight f8, as y'all can see, y'all already know the lines, knight g6, and then potentially we're going to go knight f4, you know, causing havoc on the king side. Um, after rook f to e1, uh, knight g6 is played, like I told y'all before, d catches e5, d catches e5, and then knight a2. Now, y'all, this is what y'all need to, um, uh, realize. Knight a2 is actually, um, a mistake. It's definitely a mistake. The reason why I say that. Matter of fact, I'm going to let y'all think. If y'all need to pause this video, y'all can pause this video. Uh, I'll give y'all three seconds to um, think of the best move for white. I don't want y'all just to think of the best move for black. Y'all got to really think of what's the best move for white as well. Y'all know the old um, principle in chess, you know, know your enemy, know your opponent. Same thing in the book, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. He always say, uh, know your enemy. So in this game of chess, you need to know your enemy. So what is the best move y'all would do uh, if you was white? All right. All right, y'all. So if y'all saw this move, um, knight a4, um, you are correct. The reason why uh, this is a good move because, again, you have bishop b6 ideas, and you also have um, the knight b6 ideas as well. Now, if they play something like this, um, the move that you would do is rook a6. Obviously, the bishop or the knight is not going to go on a b6 because you're going to take uh, there are two minor pieces uh, for the rook, and black will still be great. And then even after, if he goes to c4, which will be another uh, great move for white, you know, trying to go c5, all we're going to do is just go um, king f8, and if he decides to go c5, we got bishop e6. And this is the thing. If the knight goes to b6 and everything, then this knight is not going to have any other moves to go to after this. He's not going to be able to go uh, knight d5. He's not going to be able to go here or here. Um, he's definitely not going to be able to go back to knight c4 because this uh, light square bishop is controlling that square. The only move that he'll be able to go back to is uh, knight a4. And if he goes knight a4, then it kind of was a waste of move to even putting this knight on b6. Um, which is the point. And black is actually um, still good in this position. So I just wanted to give y'all a heads up. Uh, I'm going to put the whole uh, annotations uh, in the description box, y'all. So definitely go over and look at it. 
try to examine the uh, stuff for yourself. And like I said, if y'all find any other new ideas on within it, definitely uh, comment in the box below. All right. So, um, but that's not what happened. He goes knight a2. Uh, I go bishop e6. He goes knight a c1. Uh, I go rook a to d8. And he goes knight d3. Um, I kind of felt like uh, I had some moves. Uh, and like I said, I don't. It's crazy, y'all. It, it, because it's a different position, um, I did see this move c5. But then again, I did see um, the b3 move come in as well. So I did see some of that, you know. Uh, and the whole and the whole point of uh, c5 was to pin um, this um, pawn or to pin this knight um, because the rook is on a d file. But I was kind of looking at it as well. He does have um, queen c3, and um, you know it's not really doing too much. Well, it well. It actually is doing a lot, especially because of his knight was misplaced or whatever. Uh, I do have his um, b6 as well. So now that if his queen is on c3, it's going to be kind of hard for him to come back like uh, knight c1, b3, and he don't have any other squares to go to. So uh, in a sense, man, I kind of do recommend uh, this uh, type of move, especially if this knight is um, misplaced. Because usually... Uh, we always recommend this pawn stay on c6 or whatever. We don't want it to move because of light square weaknesses and everything. Um, but because of the way this knight is or whatever, uh, it probably could have been um, a great move. Um, that's just me. Um, but let's see what um, the engine actually says. See, the engine says king f8 or whatever. But I, I, I kind of like pawn c5. Um It'll be a hard move for a white to even spot uh, the next move that he can do, but um, that that's just me, though. I'm just giving y'all some ideas to think about, all right? But my opponent goes knight d3, and I go queen c8. Um, this is another move. Uh, as y'all can see, black is attacking on the pawn on h3 and everything, things like that. That's what he's doing. Um. <laughs> My opponent does go queen c3. Now, I thought the best move was actually um, bishop b6. I thought this was actually, um, like, when I did queen c8, I, I missed that move. I saw this move. I was like, oh, man, I just messed up. Um, but bishop b6 was um, actually a good move because now I won't be able to attack this pawn now because now my rook is under attack, and the only square I have is rook d7. So uh, it, it kind of stops me from doing that, and my rook is on an odd square. All right, but my opponent didn't do that. He goes queen c3. I go bishop catches h3, bishop catches h3, queen catches h3, uh, knight c5. All right, y'all. After knight c5, what is the best move for black? For all y'all black lion players out there, you know, this is y'all chance. What is the best move for black? How can, like, what is the winning move for black? What, what can you do in this position? Yeah. If y'all need to pause this video, Pause the video. I'll give y'all three seconds to think about it. 30 minutes, All right, y'all. So, if y'all thought of this move, knight h4, you are correct. Knight h4 is the move. Why is this a good move? Because, obviously, if he takes this um, pawn, then we have g captures h4. Usually, this would be a mate, but the only way he could block it with is with this knight. Or the bishop, but you're just giving up more material. You're just still going to lose. So after knight g3, uh, after h captures g3, uh, this is just dominating. White, white is, is, is in a lost position. All right. But after knight h4, my opponent actually goes knight c5. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, after, knight, not, after knight h4, my opponent goes knight f4. Which is um again, this is still a losing position. E catches on f four, rook catches d eight, bishop catches d eight, queen e five check, bishop e seven. He just trying to um, do a perpetual check on me. It's not gonna work. King f eight, queen d six, bishop b seven, um, queen b eight, and I go king g seven. And my opponent actually takes my rook because that was the whole point of the rook on g eight because we were um threatening mate. So he gives up his queen. I take back the knight. He takes my knight, and I go f3. I don't even bother to take this one. 
Um, after that move, after that three, uh, he, he just pretty much, uh, he just lost after that because the only move he did was bishop f4, and I go queen, g2, checkmate. All right, y'all, that was Unleash the Black Lion. So uh, if y'all like this video, please like, please share, please comment. Let me know what y'all think. Definitely uh, analyze this position so y'all can get more ideas of this opening, y'all, because I know a lot of y'all play it. And also, y'all, if this is your first time watching this, do not forget to subscribe. All right, y'all. Peace.